Hi everyone. So I'm back. I took a little bit of a break there, not intended, but it's been a couple of weeks since I put up a video. So thanks for waiting. Uh, I thought we should talk about dahlias. So let's start before I'm going to give you just the whole tour of all the dahlias growing. I have been waiting to do this tour because I kept thinking they were going to get better and they were going to get better and I'm not sure they're going to get any better. It has been a weird dahlia year and I know so many of you are experiencing that too. I can't tell you how many messages I've had from people saying my dahlias just are not blooming or they're not really doing anything. What is going on? So I think there's two things going on. Much of the country has been dealing with um, some major drought. Dahlias don't love drought. They like regular water. So the dahlias along the house here are on drip, so they get water every single day. Um, dahlias in other parts of my garden that basically never get water um, have buds, but they're not blooming yet. And so to me, that's definitely the difference there. The other thing is that it's been very hot in some places and dahlias also don't like a lot of heat. They're not really happy with those like 90 and up temperatures at all. So I think that's been holding things back in a lot of places as well. I don't think here we deal with that problem quite as much. It just doesn't get super, super hot here. Um, the other thing that's going on is that we just Get, most of August we had no rain. So uh, maybe last week we got a good dumping of rain, which was really nice. Everything needed it. Unfortunately, everything flopped. So I spent most of last week standing things back up again. Now I've got these dahlias staked pretty well along here. I use that Florida weave method. Um, and I'll link to a video where I talk about how I do that. Um, so they're working pretty good here, but in other places in the garden and all the sort of annuals that grow below this all sort of flopped over. And I'll tell you, everything in the garden is just looking tired right now. I think though that long stretch of dry just didn't do the garden any favors. But we have some dahlias blooming and I thought I'd walk you through them so you can see what's going on. But we're going to start, I think we're just going to work our way down this row and then we'll go around the rest of the garden. So the way I arranged the dahlias along this wall this year was I was trying to do a sort of um, graduated color effect. So I started with sort of um, bright pinks and oranges and apricots here. And then I moved down to sort of paler colors. And then I picked up the pink again and we got darker as we went that way. That is how I planned it. That is not how it worked. But we are starting right here at Labyrinth. Now, Labyrinth has been doing amazing. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I showed a picture. There's three Labyrinths uh, right here. And I think in one day, I had 25 blooms on them. It has been outstanding. Unfortunately, you might be able to tell that things don't look quite right here. And I'll tell you what happened. These first two plants have spider mites. Um, spider mites uh, tend to happen, especially with dahlias, when it's been a very dry period. I suspect on the end down here, they don't get as much water in the drip system, and I think that's what's going on here. So what am I going to do about it? I don't know. Um, I spent a lot of time checking out the um, Dahlia Society of America's website to deal with this. Spider mites are very difficult to deal with, and really their recommendation is pull them out before they infect everything. I don't know if my heart can allow me to do that. So I don't know what I'm going to do about it yet, but you can see that it's been having a problem. So you can see that the foliage is sort of mottled. There are these um, brown spots on them. You come up here. Um, I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't. There are very fine little spider webs. The flowers don't look quite right. Um, everything here, you know, it's just the leaves. This is not what what good dahlia foliage should look like. Um, there are, you know, this is all, this is all bad. So it's mostly just on these first two plants. So we, I could deal with it that way. It leaves a pretty big hole in the garden. And also look at their, their bare legs down there because I had to prop up so many things on the bottom. Anyway, um, listen, it's not Labyrinth's fault that it got spider mites. Labyrinth is a lovely dahlia that has nothing to do with the type. Um, it's just bad luck. And it's still beautiful no matter what. So next I wanna show you one that's new to me this year. This is Penn Hill Watermelon. Um, it's so good. It's a really, really good one, you guys. It gets, I love the sort of twisted petals on it. I think that's really pretty. You can see that there's some difference in the colors on it. Now this one can get 
um, quite big. The first bloom that I that I cut from this, and often the biggest blooms you get are the first ones, and then they get smaller from there, was 10 inches across. But there is one I want to try to show you, and I have to get a ladder to show it. Okay, so I'm up on a step ladder. This this plant is easily seven feet tall. Why this one got so big, I'm not sure. Maybe because they're kind of crammed in here and it was looking for some light. Okay, so this is also Penn Hill um, watermelon. And look at how much darker pink this is. This is actually the color that I more expected out of this flower. But this one, and this is the first bloom on this specific plant, which is probably why it's so big. Okay, I think the only way to properly show this to you was to just cut it. And actually, you can see that it's starting to be done anyways. The petals are starting to look a little bad on the back side there, but I mean, check that out. So this is size and I did bring out a tape measure. So let's, let's see. If you were going from petal to petal, I mean, that's an easy 10 inches and maybe 11. So anyway, you know, it's big, it's a bouquet all in itself, but isn't that stunning? And the, the twisty petals, and each petal is, each petal has like a little bit of striation in it. So uh, it's just a gorgeous dahlia. All right, let's keep going. Okay, moving on down the road here, we may move to Breakout. Now, Breakout's been interesting for me this year. Last year, it was quite, a lot more yellow. This year so far it's been quite pale, creamy pink, almost like a ballet pink, with a light yellow center, which is a color that I, I quite like on it. Um, the thing about this dahlia is the petals are quite a bit wider, the individual petals, and the whole flower is flatter. You know, some of these dahlias kind of have a dome on it. This one is quite a bit flatter, which is just a different look. I like the wider petals on it. I think it's a good texture. Um, balance, but again, this one is six feet tall, so you're getting into a tall dahlia with breakout. Okay, so next up in our line here is Cafe Ole. Wait, that's not Cafe Ole, and that's what I want to talk about, you guys. This is how all my Cafe Olays look this year. Um, I had to buy all, if you remember, I had to buy, get all new Cafe Olays this year because last year I lost them, and by lost them, I mean, I don't mean they died. I meant I literally misplaced them, and I never did end up finding them. It must have been a mislabeling thing, and I think maybe I threw them out as something else that I didn't want to keep. So I ordered new Cafe Olays, and this is Cafe Olay this year. And this happens with dahlias. If you have ever stored dahlias, you know that these tubers, one tuber looks exactly like another. There is no way to tell what variety a tuber is, to my knowledge. So if you label them wrong or you have a labeling issue, you end up with getting the wrong dahlia. Uh, now this could be a labeling issue in the growing fields, this could be a labeling issue anywhere along the line. It's not my labeling issue this time. A lot of times it is, but not this time. So, um, you know, so it's a disappointment when that happens, I'm not gonna lie. I obviously did not plan for a really corally red to be right underneath this window box. I planned for those pretty colors of Cafe Olay here but it's not the end of the world. It's actually really a nice form on Adelia. These are quite a bit smaller than what I've been seeing. And if you're looking for, I mean, it's kind of a scarlet red. Uh, it's not a color I ever would have bought. I still have no idea what Dahlia this actually is. Um, but, you know, so this happens, and I just want to share that with you because I bet you a lot of you have had this happen too, and I know it's frustrating, by the same token, I would say it's extremely easy to see how something like that can happen. Okay, next up uh, here is, you guys can tell, I think, that I have a color theme that I like with dahlias. I really seem to, and I think I might have overdone it this year, I really lean heavily towards the apricots and the peaches and the pinks. Um, so this one, I think, pretty sure, this is Belle of Barmera. Again, um, a lot of different colors that we're seeing here. This one back here, which is sort of spent has a uh, much darker pink. Okay, so same flower, look at the different colors. So colors can change with dahlias. A lot of times it's a light thing, a lot of times it's day length. Sometimes if they're hidden behind or facing the other way, they're a different color. So um, this is what I typically think of, of, the, Bellas, of the as the Belle of Barmera color. Both pretty, 
though. So the next flower in the uh, Penhill family, and I'm gonna just run up here and cut this so that you can actually see it better because unfortunately they're way over here. Okay, so this is the next uh, part of the, the um, Penhill family. This is Penhill Dark Monarch. This was maybe my favorite dahlia last year. This is quite a small flower for it. Usually they're quite a bit bigger and I have a few more of them growing where I've been getting much bigger flowers. But it's it's this is a much richer, um, I don't know what color you call it, but a deeper pink. Again, you see those again, you see those striations uh, in the petals. And that's, I think, sort of the hallmark of these Penhill ones. So I don't know if there are any more in this Penhill series, but between Penhill Watermelon and Penhill Dark Monarch, these are two of my favorite dahlias. And so I would love to try any of the other ones if there are more, but really pretty. And I like the form on this one too. So I do have dahlias that grow behind what are really disreputable looking cherry tomatoes right now. But I just noticed that I ended up having a breakout in there, which was again, not supposed to be there. Um, but I want to show you this one because this is a much more tip, what I think, think is a more typical breakout color. Also a nice big size on this and look at the width of those petals. So I just want to quickly go back to breakout and show you that one. Okay, so that's all the tall ones. I generally plant the dinner plates to get there against the house, and I try to keep shorter ones over here. Now, we are um, just on the other side of the patio, uh, and I don't change this area up very often because I really like sort of where the placement's been the past couple of years. And the first one I wanna show you is Crichton Honey. So if I have to make a list of my top five dahlias, and someday I think I'll try to write a post on that for the blog, Crichton Honey is going to be on that list. Um, I saved, it's a very hard tuber to find. If you find it, I would buy it. I don't see it around very often. I can't tell you why. These are all, these are all Crichton Honey. Now this, this one is a little spent, but so you can see the variation in color. It's generally a salmon color to a yellow color. Um, sometimes they go more yellow, sometimes they go more salmon. This is sort of what I think is the most typical color of a Crichton honey, but it's a really nice ball. Um, probably grows about, I mean, I would say 30 inches maybe. So I sometimes stake them and I sometimes don't. I think it's probably better to stick a short stake within and try to keep them in because they did get a little floppy on me uh, when we had all that rain. But um, they're, they don't need a great deal of support, just a little bit. But I mean, how can you not love Crichton honey? So you might have noticed I, I seem to have quite an affinity for ball dahlias, and I, I, I don't know what, I'll never get over it. This is a new one for me this year. This is Linda's Baby. In fact, all three of these are Linda's Baby, and I cut three of them to just sort of show you that there's not a ton of color difference on them. Sometimes they get a little paler. Um, they're a touch smaller than Crichton Honey. So these two, let me just grab the Crichton Honeys for you. These two are the Crichton Honeys. You can tell they're really similar. They're very similar, you know, in color tone and form. I think if you were just starting to buy dahlias, you probably are better off just picking between Linda's Baby or Crichton Honey because they're similar enough that you can get into that later. But again, a really nice, in fact, this flower in particular is quite nice because you can see how they sort of wrap around the back, but the center is still closed. Uh, same, basically the same height as Crichton Honey, same form, very similar in a lot of ways. I wouldn't be surprised if there's similar parentage behind these two. So this tall red one behind me, reddish pink, is new for me this year. This is K.A.'s Rosy Joe. Here's what it looks like. It's again, another ball. I had to look far and wide and I'm pretty sure I paid a lot for that tell you. Uh, I had no idea it was gonna get that tall. So that was a little surprise. I probably wouldn't have put it right there. Not that I mind it cause it's beautiful, but I think it's well named. It's very rosy color. And beyond that, just behind it um, is uh, Marn, which is a really, really nice um, terracotta color. It's not a bright orange. It's a yet definitely a goldier orange. Um, ball that has again really nice form um, and really really tight petals if you look at the difference between the petals on this this one has very tight petals and these are like slightly have more of a tip to them um, it's just kind of i don't know i get so into the ball dahlias that i guess i'm looking for differences in them now but anyways both of them are new for me this year i like them both i guess the answer is i would grow them both again but then it's hard to find a dahlia i wouldn't grow again okay so at the bottom of your frame here, you can see uh, HS date. 
So I think you guys probably know, if you've been watching me for any amount of time, that I'm a big fan of the HS series of dahlias. HS stands for Happy Single. Now, Happy Single dahlias have dark, almost, well, I would say it's very dark olive green foliage and uh, they just produce flowers massively. As long as you keep deadheading them, um, they will just keep producing flowers and the bees and the butterflies absolutely adore them. So this is two of them that I'm growing. Um, now this one is HS Date, much orange, much more orange. And this one is HS Kiss. HS Kiss is new for me this year. It's more of an apricot. I actually think between the two of them that I prefer the HS Date. It's a little bit more impactful in the garden. Although they're both, again, very similar. I don't know that you would need to have both of them. I think you'd probably be good by just picking your favorite of the two. I think the flowers on HS Date are slightly larger than the flowers on HS Kiss. Now, whether that's just where they're growing or whether that's common for the plants, I'm not sure, but those are two. I have another HS Flame that we'll look at in a bit. Before we move around, we've got a lot more dahlias to look at, if you can believe that. Um, this is uh, Gallery Art Nouveau. Uh, the Gallery series of dahlias are really nice because they're super short, they never need staking, and they all have kind of slightly different blooms. This one is a little bit more orange with sort of a fuchsia underside on them. And that flower might look good, but I want to show you, zoom out here a little, and show you these plants. So these plants look terrible. This one in particular has looked terrible for a long time. And I believe this is thrips. Thrips is another problem with dahlias. I have never had that problem before, to be honest, and it's been going on all summer. They still keep blooming. So I haven't done anything about them, even though the foliage doesn't look great. I have just let them do their thing and they're still blooming away. Um, the flowers don't last for a long time and they're not big, but they're a lot of nice look for not a lot of work because you don't have to stake them or anything. I've been leaving this dahlia, which is basically done and about to die, I mean the flower, for a long time because I wanted you to see this one on the stem. Can you even believe this? New one for me this year, peachy salmon dinner plate. I am going to have to look through my orders and figure out where I ordered from because it's one of the ones I added on for a shipping deal. And I am gonna cut it right now for you guys. Okay, can you even, this is another enormous one. Look at this thing. I, I had no, when I bought this, I certainly had no idea. Now, again, all this petals, this, this is a spent flower. This actually, now that I look at this, it almost looks to me like this flower has two centers, but it doesn't look like that from the bottom. Um, nice, super wide petals, bent back. I would describe this color as sort of, I'm hoping, let me, I'm gonna turn the camera because I hope you can get a better, an accurate depiction of the color on this. I think you can see the color a little better here. So I would say this color is um, salmony pink and the center is a very gold, very orangey gold color. So there's, so the other thing about this plant is that it's only about four feet tall. Maybe even, no, it's about four feet. I would say this flower was growing at four feet, maybe slightly less. So I don't know if that's supposed to be like that because I barely remember ordering this plant. <laughs> um, but it's a really nice height because I have it staked low. It's got super strong stems and it couldn't really be in a better spot where, than where it is right now. You don't need to go to extraordinary measures to stake this one. A nice low stake would work and then you get a flower like that. Okay, so there's a couple more that grow in this part of the garden. Both of them are about, you know, th maybe three and a half feet tall. Um, they both could use a little staking. Really lovely ones that probably should have been in a better spot. First one is Bacardi. And this beauty, I don't know the name of, but I will by the time I put some names up on the screen. So whatever it says on the screen is what this is. But it's awfully pretty, kind of almost a little lavender center on that. Kind of a nice change from my oranges that I have everywhere. So speaking of oranges everywhere, here's another one. But this is a lovely one. This is Maya. Um, and this is, I believe what they call a water lily form flower. And this is really, let me get you closer here. 
it's a nice change, really pretty flower form on that. And again, um, kind of a goldy peachish orange, um, should have been in a better spot too. But when you grow all these dahlias, what's a better spot? They're all fighting for it. Okay, we gotta keep moving. I am burning daylight because I can't stop talking about dahlias. So this year I did plant some dahlias along on this area, which I haven't done before, but I like it a lot. And I think it's interesting because I have a lot of the same dahlias that I have up there. So first of all, I've got some labyrinths down here. Now you can see these labyrinths, which are not staked by the way, are three and a half feet tall. So I think one of the things that I've learned here is that now these did get in a lot later than the ones over there. So they just could be slow because of that. But also I really have them crammed in there against the house. So I think some of those are growing a little taller than they might not grow if they were just uh, loose. And these are really pretty flowers and these don't have spider mites. So that's nice too. And then as we come down here, we've got some more cafe au lait, which would have been very pretty with the uh, flamingo celosia there had they been cafe au lait, but they're not. So we get, but these are better examples of this flower, this cafe au lait imposter as well. Um, it's, it's not an ugly flower by any stretch of the imagination. And then just to show you down here, I've got several planted down here and they've all got buds, but I wanted to show you that I have a lot of dahlias that are not blooming yet either. I think this is Thomas Edison and um, Avignon, something else blooming down here. Again, not staked, should be staked, not staked, but they're holding up okay. Somewhere along the line, I ended up with tons of Nuit de Ta dahlia tubers. So I have them scattered throughout the garden. Um, and here's one of them, uh, sort of a cactus type dahlia. It actually looks like something's been nibbling on that. That looks like earwig damage to me. Um, but just an all around good performer, nice dark dahlia. So I think I've showed you these dahlias in a previous video. Um, new for me this year, Jowie Morella. Okay, it's another ball dahlia. I get it, you guys, I have a problem. Nice dark one, even fades out when they're pretty. I mean, sorry, when they get old, they even are pretty. Um, I was hoping this one wouldn't need staking, but it does, it definitely needs staking. It gets, I mean, this one right here is, is all of four feet tall. The rest are three and a half. So do plan on staking this one, but you can do a low stake on it. You don't need like a seven foot stake on this one extremely floriferous. Um, and this is not ones, these don't get regular watering over here. These are pretty much planted and go. I do water them for a little bit after, right after I plant them, but um, these don't get a lot of extra attention. So this has been a fabulous, uh, a fabulous performer. The last of the HS dahlias that I have in the garden here is this one. This is HS Flame. I've grown this one in this spot for several years. It has not performed nearly as well as it has in past years, but this is the flower, bright cherry red flower on the darkest foliage of all of them that grow here. Although this one gets less sun than the other ones. So maybe the foliage is darker because it gets less sun and maybe that's why it's not performing as well. Also, I've had these tubers for many years and I didn't divide them that much. I left them in fairly big clumps and I suspect that might be hindering their blooming this year too. So I think that covers all the dahlias in my yard. I skipped over a couple because at some point, I don't know that you guys can look at any more ball dahlias. Um, I'm gonna try not to buy any more next year. I don't know if I'll be successful, but the best part of a dahlia tour is this. So this is that, uh, peachy salmon dinner plate. This is the Penn Hill watermelon. And this is that breakout that I just grabbed, which is no slouch either, plus all those other ones. So I have a beautiful bouquet to enjoy. And that's the best part about dahlias because you must keep cutting if you want more. So you just keep making yourself these beautiful bouquets and bring them in. And yeah, you know, dahlias don't have great vase life in my experience. Um, as long as you now, if you pick, just so you know, if you pick a dahlia where the blue, where the petals are already starting to go on the back, don't expect that to last in a vase more than a day or two max. Um, if you pick them when they're right at their prime or like just about to be at their prime, um, they will last the longest then. And dahlias don't open up much once they get in a vase. So you want them to be, they'll open up a touch more, but for the most part, what you pick is what they're going to look like in the vase. So anyway, I couldn't be happier with 
with any of these really. Um, it's not been the easiest Dahlia year. It's also not been the worst and they do bring me a great amount of joy. So I hope you guys have tried growing dahlias. Um, if you had a rough year with them, hang in there. It wasn't a normal year. Um, they aren't, I'm not gonna lie to you, they require a little bit more work than some flowers in the garden. But to me, any amount of work you can put into them, well, I mean, gosh, how can you, how can you go wrong, right? All right, I hope you guys are having a great day in your garden and we'll catch you soon.